Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're out here in beautiful Panama City, Florida, the base of the Tyndall Bridge, right by Tyndall Air Force Base. I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, if you hear jets flying over today, that's a good thing. That's the sound of freedom right over top of us here at the American flag, baby. Uh, we're gonna review today something brand new. This is Yamaha's brand new 2023 222 FSH E-Series. So this is the top of the line, we just bought it. Just had it out for the gathering this past week and it was wonderful, we wanna show it to you. Also, before we do that, big shout out to our friends at East Bay Flats. We're filming on their dock today, it's brand new. And by the way, they're looking for tenants. So they're gonna be signing people up to rent these soon. If you have questions about that, hit them up on Facebook, East Bay Flats. Thank you, East Bay Flats, for letting us film here. Before we get started, I think one other detail that bears mentioning, we bought this boat, we own this boat, we've been out on it quite a lot now. Our video is gonna really give you a unique perspective, kind of an owner's perspective on what you might expect from buying one of these boats. We're not like a lot of those reviewers that just see it for a few minutes and kind of give you their recap, and that's all fine and good. But our videos are gonna be more in depth and something hopefully they help you out a little bit better when you're making the decision if you wanna buy one of these. As with all Yamaha boats since 2003 really, the chief focal point, kind of the main design element that has made them so dominant, Yamaha makes more boats, builds more boats, sells more boats than any other boat maker on the planet. The swim platform, that's really what's kind of got them where they are today. There's a lot of other great features about Yamaha. They're reliable and dependable and technology and all those things, but this swim platform, man, that's. That's it. And they've really doubled down this year uh, with the 2023 222 FSH. Uh, let's go through some of those features real quick here and talk about why that's such a big deal. First off, notice where the water level is. We're sitting in, I don't know, 10, 15 foot of water here. Water level is just right, right here. We're talking maybe five inches. So getting on and off the boat for swimming bringing a fish on the boat, if you got mobility issues, whatever the case, so easy. There's no outboard hanging off back here. There's no prop down below that you're kind of worried about. There's just a jet powered boat, jet propulsion, uses wave runner engines. We'll talk about that later. Super wide, ease of access, and with the new swim up seats, we'll put that on the screen right now, show you what that looks like on other boats. It comes with the receptacles for the new swim up seats. So if you buy the swim up seat accessory, Plug those in when you're at the sandbar, and now you've got a cool place to hang out in the water and treat this more like a swim-up bar. So cool. Nobody else is doing that. Back here in the back, you've got a second terrace up on top. So we can sit down, use the backrest, chill out, hanging out with our friends. A little table mount here. You can do it inside. You can do it on the swim platform. You can cut bait on here. You can serve lunch on here. Really versatile. Super cool. You have cup holders in the back. So we've got one, two three, four cup holders. We've got flush outs here for flushing the salt water out of your system outside the boat where it's easy to get access. That's so cool. Previous year models, you'd have to get inside the boat and kind of crawl over and it was just difficult. Water sometimes sprays out of your hose and it can be a mess. But back here, it doesn't matter. If water's flowing, who cares? It's on the swim platform. Love that feature. Remote control access for your stereo system. If you want to control it from there, that's awesome. Rear facing cleats, ease of tying. Got a couple more cup holders across the back edge here. So now that makes it seven cup holders just right back here in this zone. Water sports guys, got yourself a tow point for towing tubes. Some are gonna ask the question, can I tow a wakeboard or can I tow a surfboard uh, and go surfboarding or wakeboarding, tying off maybe from the tower? The answer is no, don't do it. It's not been proven yet. Is the tower strong enough or the mount point strong enough? I would not recommend it. If you're gonna tow, tow from down low, okay? Now let's talk about this cleanout port hatch. This is a Yamaha exclusive and one of, I would say, maybe their key advantage, uh, advantages or value propositions over buying a competitor's boat. With a jet drive style boat, you have two impellers turning inside of a closed housing and it's possible that you could suck up in debris, ski rope, whatever. So Yamaha engineers back in like the 90s came up with this really great idea called the cleanout port. Basically, you're able to take this cleanout port if you were to suck up trash, reach down in, clear that debris, uh, and then go about your way. Safety features included, there's a little kill switch right here. Once you open this hatch up, if you have forgotten to turn the engines off, that kill switch disengages the engines. So you can reach down in here without worrying about wrapping your arm around the shaft like this guy right here. So to install the clean out port, you'll notice on the top here, you got a little tab here on the 2023. There's another tab here 
off to the right. It's a little different from 2017 release and also prior to 2017, there's two different systems. This one's got the same twist lock like the 2017 through 2022, but it's a little different shape type of uh, construction. When you get ready to install, what you'll do is you'll lock it to the kind of the open position here. You'll see a look like this. These two are close to one another. So this is wrong. This is right. We're gonna align this tab that says set with a notch that is found in the inside center of the forward side of that inlet. I'm gonna press it down, aligning the tab, not this right side tab, the center tab. Once we align it, press it down, twist, and then bring up. So it's a down, twist, up. And that up motion is what locks it in place and prevents it from turning. When you're gonna release it, you press down, twist, and back out. Works the same way for both sides. Pretty cool. Definitely one of the most things. And also too, something I want to point out, after you're done using the boat and you're getting ready to take it home and you know put it on the trailer, take it home, wash it, rinse it. Here's also a really good tip. It's a pro tip for you. Take your plug, pull it out and leave it hang just like this. What'll happen is the water that's inside the plugs will drain and the little rubber gaskets that are around the sides they'll stay nice and new. If you leave them in the water all the time, they'll swell over time and they can become difficult to install and remove, leading to potential failure. So leave them in this position. And then when you go to a boat again, next time you go out, make it part of your checklist. Install your plugs, check your drain plug and other things before you go. All right, also maybe you're asking what this question is here. Inside this access here, access to mechanical. If you wanna do any kind of work back here on your exhaust, if you want to add inst install underwater LEDs or whatever, access to mechanical. You've got screws around the perimeter, all sealed up with silicone, and then a quick access here. This is a drain, so water gets inside this compartment, it can get out of the boat. All right, moving on. So moving into the boat now, we're going to step on this back deck. We're going to look at what's in front of us here. First off, we have a really nice leaning post, has a convertible backrest. So if you want to sit back here and cast, or watch our kids playing on the beach, or whatever's going on, Nice seating position. Want to move it here for seating while we're driving. You can do that too very easily just by grabbing the strap. Easy to move. Our boat came with a really nice angle cooler and a strap keeps it secured in place. Nice cooler. Uh, base models may not come with the cooler. I'm not 100% sure on that, but ours did be in the, uh, the kind of the higher line. Live well over on the side here. I got to say this is probably 35 gallon, 40 gallon live well. It does have the aerator, so you can keep the fish lively inside. We can keep the water circulating. When you want to drain the live well, simply just pull the drain. It'll all drain out. It's got a fill switch on the dash. All right, so now that the water is full to the top, you're gonna to notice that this drain pipe here is tall enough to where the tank stays full, but then when the water starts to overfill, water's gonna run down the drain pipe out the side. So this is really to keep good, clean water with lots of oxygen in the tank to keep your fish alive. When you're fishing, a lively bait makes it a lot more likely you're gonna catch a fish. When we're done, we'll simply switch off the live well we're gonna take our drain pipe, we're gonna unscrew the drain pipe. It takes it quite a lot of turns. And once it's draining, you'll see the same drain, the water's gonna run out. All right, so now that we're fully drained, we're gonna screw back in our uh, aerator pipe here. I'll call it an aerator pipe, probably has another fancy name for it. Thread that back in. All the way down to where it's fully seated, there's a seal on the base of that thread. So that way water doesn't run out the bottom. There we go. Nice and tight. Looks like it's got a light inside. I just noticed that. That's really cool. And it also has a shutoff valve there for your, uh, for your system. Latch is shut. That's nice. Let's go ahead and count cup holders while we're here. I've already counted seven back here on the swim platform walk forward we've got two up by the helm three four five six seven eight nine ten plus seven is 17 cup holders on board so you're not going to have to reach far for your favorite beverage really cool 
built into the floor, both the port and starboard side here, you're going to see that you have these really nice rumble seats. Flip the seat back up, snap it to itself so it's not whipping you in the back of the head. When we're running to our favorite fishing hole, you can sit back, have a nice chair. So for seating, I'm going to flip this other guy up here. This is an improvement, by the way, on the 2020, well, 2018 through 2022 models. There was a little insert that went in back for a seat back. This was all one flat deck. And honestly, that insert, you had to find a place to put it anytime you wanted to use it. It wasn't convenient. This is a big plus. So 2023, big plus over the 21 foot FSHs. I really like this feature. So seating, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, comfortably. Our placard says it's rated for 10, so that makes sense. Uh, along with the seating, I just noticed something else. Bring the camera in over here. A little pocket here, if you got a place to put your phone or your wallet or you're gonna store something, it's right here. Really cool, they got that on both sides. This boat comes with an upgraded Hertz stereo system, something new for 2023. I've never heard of Hertz before, but I understand it's quality stuff. Upgraded speakers, you're gonna notice you have them two here and two in the front. Also have two facing aft, so a total of six speakers on this boat. We have our raw water wash down inside. We'll turn our wash down switch to the on position. That's gonna engage the motor inside. And this is gonna be using water, whatever water you're riding on, this is electrified. So I really like that because in the first generation FSH models, they used pump pressure. So off the top of the jet pump, it had a little output used typically for wave runners when the engine's running, that little spout for wave runners. They were using that pickup and they were using the pump pressure and at low RPMs, the pressure wasn't very good. Now they have a dedicated electric motor. You can switch it on and pump the water, wash off any fish blood or whatever else you wanna rinse the deck down. Really super cool feature. You can also quick disconnect that, that hose and stow it away. Really great. All right, moving into our engine compartment. Nice, big, heavy-duty stainless steel strut. Notice that it supports the weight of the hatch with the cooler in place, so that's really cool. I don't think it would do that if it was full of ice and drinks, so uh, you might want to move the cooler before you do this if it's full. Uh, twin 1.8 liter, 180 horsepower engines, total of 360 horse, naturally aspirated. Um, great power package. We were out this weekend running, and I think we saw about 45 miles an hour prior to break-in. I think as we break these engines in, probably going to see north of 50 or right at 50 miles an hour once they're really thoroughly broken in. Usually around 100 hours, you'll see these things run a whole lot different than when they were first uh, brand new. So um, access to your oil changes, you can do them all yourself. We've got a video for that. We will can share that with you in the link below in the description below. Um, Runs on obviously now regular pump gas, 87. If you're gonna be running it uh, periodically, uh, not every day, you might wanna put some non-ethanol gas in here. You can put up to 10% ethanol gas in here, but I'd recommend that you treat that gas with Stabil, Startron, something like that. Uh, just always a good idea. Uh, these little blue toppers here, big shout out to uh, Cycle Springs and Clearwater, Florida. This is their exclusive. This gives you ease of access to your uh, fogging ports, you can fog the engines very simply. This is an exclusive to Cycle Springs. We really appreciate them doing that for us. Makes fogging so much easier. Saltwater guys, you wanna fog your engines once a quarter. It's a good pro tip for you there, just because of the salt air. Just nice to keep a nice layer inside. So, all right, getting on past the engine compartment here. Does have a bilge switch in, inside or a bilge pump inside and it does bypass your battery. I found that out this weekend. Turned my batteries off, but I came back out and my bilge was pumping. So if you have water in your bilge and it needs to get out, even if you turn your batteries off, it's gonna still pump the water out. So that was really cool. On these E-Series models, notice how I've got the Simrad on the side here. This is really nice. It's got our GPS and charts and all those cool things. I have not learned how to use that yet. I'm not an expert. You'll wanna consult your owner's manual or maybe look on Simrad's website. Get familiar with that. We do have a really cool battery charger here for our smartphone. It does charge through the case. Put your smartphone in place. It does handle rough water really well. We just tested that thoroughly this past week and it charges the phone just great. Uh, 4.3 connect screen here. I wish I had seen the seven inch connects on the E-Series model. Because this boat is a top of the line, I really would have expected to have seen a big screen. On the 222XD, you get the big Jumbotron. On the 222 FSH, I would have seen, really thought we would have seen something bigger, but this will do. Uh, compass. All of your switches here, we have our horn, bilge, live well, accessories. 
underwater lights. It does have the underwater lights. It's a cool feature if you like going out at night. Spreader lights. The top here, we do have our, um, our navigation lights and our map lights. All of those things are uh, on the dash here. The uh, lights up top are going to be something we can fold down to reduce height. Here's our spreaders here and our map lights for night. Let's check see if it's in the front. We do. Spreaders in the front as well. Hertz stereo system comes with a nice cover. I would recommend you put this on when the boat's in storage, but do not put this on when you're treadering down the road. These things are prone to fly off. Ask me how I know. You just asked, right? I had a cover on my Simrad when I left the dealer. When I got home six hours later, this cover's gone. So treadering down the road, take your covers off, stow them away. Storing in the broad, bright sunlight, put them on. Hertz stereo system, Bluetooth connect, play your sound system through your smartphone, AM, FM, all those fun things. Below, we had a 12 volt adapter here to blow up, uh, blow up inflatables. You're gonna use your simple plug-in. Also have a USB connect here. Uh, and it looks like we have a USB-C so you can charge your smartphone. That uh, USB is probably also another way you can do software updates and things like that. Tilt steering wheel. Love the knob in the middle here. It really makes it super easy when you're controlling the boat. You need to make a lot of turns there, a lot of rotations. Push button start, turn your ignition switch on, press to start, press to start. You have your blower switch here. The blower is obviously to evacuate any fume smells out of the engine compartment. If the boat's been sitting for a long period of time, you wanna do that. Just make sure you do it. Don't skip that step, especially if you just gassed up. Run your blower at least three or four minutes before you start. If you've been running the boat for a while and you, you, know, you just shut it off, don't worry about the blower. It's, it's not for that, but for long periods of time where the boat's been sitting, you don't want any excess fumes in the engine compartment before you start. Uh, don't be that guy you see on YouTube that's got the boat blowing up and you're going, oh man, that guy, what a dummy, right? All right, so your no wake mode and cruise assist button here. This is really cool. If you're out there on the water trying to maintain a no wake speed, if you put your boat into the forward idle position, pressing the plus button once, twice, or three times gives you no wake stage one, stage two, stage three, up to about five miles an hour. So you don't have to worry about fidgeting with the throttles trying to find that perfect no wake speed. When we're at cruising speeds, let's say that I'm out cruising along, I've locked in 30 miles an hour, but I wanna go a little bit faster. If the waves are bumping and the boat's jumping, we don't wanna necessarily grab the throttle because sometimes you kinda of grab too much and then you lurch or you slow down. So pressing the plus button once gives you about 100 extra RPMs, it's gonna speed up a little. Press the minus button once, it's gonna slow you down a little. You have plus eight and minus eight from where you started. So you can really fine tune your speed. It's like cruise assist, but it's technically not a cruise assist, it's more like an RPM control. All right, electronic throttles built in, helps you synchronize. You can actually press a button on the dash here and go to a single throttle mode where one throttle does both, if you prefer, that's built in. Dual batteries on this boat. So dual batteries, we got a house battery. We also have a start battery. The house battery is perfect for staying out, playing the stereo, hanging out, but you wanna turn your start battery off when you're not using the starter. Obviously, to get ready to go, you don't want to try to start the engines and the, in the battery's dead. So choose house battery when you're chilling at the sandbar. Choose your start battery when you're getting ready to start. You have selectors on the back wall here, labeled start, house, and emergency parallel. If you find that one battery is a little weak and you need to have a little extra bump, just combine the two using the emergency parallel. See how it's red with that little notch is red? Now notice when I flip it on, see how the notch is green? That tells you your batteries are on. When you are putting the boat to bed and you're not using her, switch everything to the off position, okay? That's going to allow you to save the batteries and prevent this thing from being dead the next time you wanna go out and hang out. A lot of people forget that. Last thing you do before you leave the boat, kill the batteries, okay? So let's talk about rod holders. Down here on the lower platform, these are an aftermarket accessory, so this may not be on your boat, but for our boat, they're here. We have two rod holders built into the cup holders, so one, two, there are Two more there and two more there. So three, four, five, six. We have three here. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 13. And in the front, there's an accessory here making 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 rod holders. For those of you that think that's excessive, a lot of guys take a bunch of people with and they have de several different rigs they're setting up for several different types of fishing. So it's important to have a lot of rod holders. A couple of final things around the helm here. If you'll notice down below, we have our ignition switch and also our kill switch here. So we're gonna make sure that that ignition switch is connected to your belt loop when you're in operation. We also have a storage compartment right here. This is lockable. 
for your glove box there. Up top, I would like to have seen a lockable glove box here for a VHF or just whatever else you want to do. Maybe they'll put that in next year. And a big storage pocket here is really nice. I've also got a couple rod holders up here. I missed these on the original count. Let's amend that. It was 22, now it's 24 or 26. 26 rod holders. Pretty awesome. Moving around. In the front, on the 222, just like on the 255, you've got the full protection windscreen here. Whereas on the 19 footers, you got a little gap here the breeze so this is going to have a little more full protection here for you in the front you've got your seating here super comfortable also a lockable storage closet changing room potty room whatever you want to call it tons of room room for your life jackets coolers all your mechanicals back here you've got uh, your fire extinguisher and uh, access to your back side of your helm for electronics electrical wiring lots of storage room there also would like to see a ladder or a step to get out of here it can be a little bit difficult uh, to get out of this uh, this compartment here because it is very deep. Over on the side here, you notice these pods. This is really great. And one of the things I love about the FSH, these guys ask questions. The designers ask questions. And the, the guide fishermen that I know, actually a few friends of mine that gave some of those pointers, these pods, being able to sight cast and look down on top of your fish right here, non-skid, being able to sight cast, it's so great. But because we've got the pods, Beneath, we have lots of storage. So you'll notice you got a trash can. You got a place to put all your stuff. You bring in life jackets, you bring in your kids' uh, inflatables, you got your food, whatever. Just tons and tons and tons of room. Both sides. Something I think a lot of boat builders fail to really prioritize is lots and lots of storage. In Yamaha, they're great at that. Lots and lots of storage. Up here in the front, we've got access to the storage we just saw right underneath this cushion here. And with this boat, because it's the nicer high line, we get the built-in snap-down cushions, both sides. On this side, we have a built-in cooler. Right now, I've got my table leg and a rope in here, but this is a cooler. It is uh, able to hold ice and keep your catch if you wanna store your catch there. I don't have it on the boat today, but it also comes with a nice table here that you can lock in place and make this one large open casting platform. So the cushions come off, got this big open casting deck. You can kind of stand out here and fish. Really great. Grab handles in the front. Lots of room. I stand about six feet tall. I can stretch out. This nice little cutout in the front here lets me stretch out and get comfortable. Great place to sit when you're cruising. Grab out the, onto the handrail here. Nice cleat in the front. So you have two cleats port and starboard and also a cleat in the bow too which is really great for tying off big large anchor locker lots of room for your chain and road holds a big anchor for those guys that are out uh, in big water you want a big anchor something that's going to be substantial we use a fortress fx7 it's our highest recommendation for a boat anchor and the floor got this little floor locker here one of the recommendations that the guides gave to the design team was you got to have a bait bucket so that you can throw a cast net and throw your bait into that bucket so the boat comes standard with a bait bucket lots of storage and obviously has a drain all the water bails off the boat this is a self bailing boat so there are drains both port and starboard now your highline models like the e-series here are going to come with snap down marine mat from the factory you'll see some snap and some stick down Really cool, when you get done using it, take it out, rinse it off, stow it away. If you don't want to use it that day, just leave it in the garage. Makes for a really nice luxurious and also a lot more non-skid. Well, that rounds out our review of the 222 FSH E-Series. If we did not mention something specific that you were looking for, hit us in the comments below and ask your questions. We'd love to answer them for you. And if you like this video, check this one right here out.